Shalom, this is your boy Yael. This time I want to come out of the um, the New Testament. And as many of you know, I, I'm not a Christian. I was a Christian. I used to be a Christian for 20 plus years. I was an ordained minister within the um, Christian church. I was an ordained apostle within the Christian church. 20 plus years of my life was devoted to Christ and being a Christian. I am 55 years old and I spent 22 years of my life as a Christian. But glory be to Yehovah, the Holy One of Israel that woke me up from out of my slumber. Now that may be offensive to hear to some, but to others it is glorious to, to their ears to hear that testimony. So I want to share something to you out of the New Testament from the book of Romans. Chapter seven, and I'm not going to deal with the whole chapter. I just want to deal with some key things that stood out of this chapter that um, Paul is saying. Now, because one thing I noticed when I look at this chapter, I noticed to me that Paul is sharing his testimony of how he related with the laws, how he struggled with them, how they became deaf unto him because he couldn't live up to them. He was weak. And somehow in his writings and somehow in our interpretation and trying to understand his writings, we made his testimony, I believe, a universal statement of truth that um, is speaking of everyone. But listen to what Paul says. And I want to start at verse 7 of Romans chapter 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? And remember the word there, law, is referring to Torah. Torah does not mean law. The Torah actually means teachings and instructions. So let me begin again. So what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. God forbid. Nay, I would have not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin taking occasion by the commandments wrought in me. All matters of conception. For without the um, law, sin was dead. Verse 9. For I was alive. Not we were alive. I was alive without the law once. But when the commandments came, sin revived and I died. Not we died. I died. Verse 10. And the commandments which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. Not we found it to be unto death. Paul is acknowledging he found it to be unto death because he couldn't live up to it. Verse 11. Now let me verse 10. And the commandments which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. I found. Paul's saying, I found this thing to be unto death because I can't measure up to it. I can't live according to it. Not we is not a universal statement. Paul is talking about himself, his struggles, his weakness. And somehow the church has made this a message to refer to everyone. Just like when they take that passage when David said, I was conceived in sin. David said that of himself. That is not a universal statement talking about everyone. David did not say we were conceived in sin. David said he was. Now, you could disagree with me or not. Everybody had the right to um, embrace a, a lesson the way they see fit. They could reject it. They could ponder it or they could agree with it. It's all it's, it's up to you. I'm not offended either way. You believing or not believing or completely disregarding. Verse. Let me read verse 10 again. And the commandments which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. Verse 11. For sin, 
taking occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me. Paul is talking about himself. This is not a universal statement to put on all the people. Paul is talking about himself. Verse 12, therefore the law is holy and the commandment holy, just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me, God forbid. But sin in that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandments might become exceedingly sinful. And then some of the things Paul say, I just don't understand is just complete bewilderment. And I have no idea what he's actually saying. Now, some critics will look at that and be like, aha, see, you don't understand what Paul's saying. Paul right here is just saying a bunch of gibberish right now. He already let you know he's talking about himself. He found the Torah to be a struggle to him here in this writing. It's a struggle for him. That's what he's saying. Verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold unto sin. For... That which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But now to but how to perform that which is good, I find not for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not that I do Now If I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I, I then I find then a law. That when I would do good, evil is present with me. But I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members. Now what here Paul is talking about is the duality here. Paul is talking about there is another teaching. There's another instruction that is warring with him. And he keeps falling prey to that teaching of being disobedient. To God, that Torah of his members is to walk contrary to the Torah of God. Because remember, Paul said the Torah is spiritual, it's holy, it's righteous, it is good. But I keep falling short. Everybody did not have everybody did not have this testimony. We can see in Psalms one nineteen, David loves the Torah. He's going on about how he loves it. It's his meditation day and night. He loves it. But that's not what Paul is saying when he refers to the Torah here in this stage of his life where he's writing. He's letting you know his testimony and the Torah was not a delight to him. He struggled with it. He warred with it. It was another Torah that triumphed over him that he hearkened to. But one thing I find here about Paul, Paul did not want to take accountability fully. Because if he did bad, it really won't him. It was the sin in him. If he did good, it was the Christ in him. Either way, he takes no accountability for the good he do. He takes no accountability for the bad he do. And we have to be held accountable for what we do because Yehovah is going to judge us for what we do. He's not judging us because of what somebody else did. He's judging us for what we did. We are held accountable for what we do. That's why we must repent because we're the ones who did it. Uh, verse 23 again. But I see another law, another Torah, another instructions, another teaching in my members warring against the Torah of my mind and, bring, and bringing me into captivity to the Torah of sin, the teachings of sin. Right here, many Christians have said the law of sin is referring to what Yehovah gave Moses to give the Israelite. 
And that is not what Paul is talking about at all. Paul is not calling the Torah sin. Verse 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of this death? I'm going to go ahead and finish this out. Um, Paul here said, I thank God through um, Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the um, law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So right here we see Paul ends with a duality again. He is letting you know. In his mind, his heart, he knows the Torah is right. But he is dealing with that animalistic nature that will not submit to the will of God. That's the law of sin that he is talking about. He is not calling the Torah of God, the Torah of Moses, the teachings and instructions that Yehovah gave Moses to give to the Israelite. He's not calling that sin. Even I know in another letter, he calls it the ministry of sin and death and all this other crazy mess. But I just wanted to share that with you and let me know what you think about it. Now, I know some of you going to be adamantly against my rendering of it. You, you want to see it as universal referring to everyone on the globe. But Paul was sharing his testimony. Paul was sharing his struggles with the Torah. So think about that. This is your brother Yael Ezra Ben Levy. Till next time. Shalom.